with everyone in the world with their own view. Ever wonder if God has a view? And, and that's what the show's all about. What's God's view versus our view? Topics that affect our daily life. Empowering and inspiring. Right. To develop a heart, a kingdom mindset, you know. <laughs> because God does have a view. Your host, Dr. Trudy Simmons, The Christian View. Hi, and welcome to The Christian View. I'm your host, Dr. Trudy, and I am just so excited that you've invited us into your home today. We have a great story, a great guest that I know is going to bless you. And so thank you again for inviting us into your home, whether you're listening by radio or a podcast. We do take today's hot and challenging topics and weigh it against the Word of God because God does have a view, and His view needs to be out more today than ever. So thank you again for tuning in. My guest today is Angela Williams. Thank you so much for coming today. Oh, Trudy, I'm so excited to be on The Christian View. You have an amazing story, amazing testimony. I call it from tragedy to triumph because the Lord took what the enemy meant for evil and made it a beautiful story, a beautiful masterpiece of healing and deliverance. And now you're using your story to touch lives all around the world. So let me just tell them a little bit about you. You're an author a speaker, and an advocate for sexually abused children. In fact, you were abused sexually for 14 years, and at the age of 17, you tried to take your life because of all the torment. But the Lord had something more beautiful in mind for you, and so I would love to share that story. Well, uh, like so many, um, my abuse took place in my home and don't really have a memory. I, I finally, God gave me one memory when I was in a crib that I wasn't abused. So. Um, just a long, 14 years is a long time for a, a child time. to be in a minefield of always being punished, mm -hmm. always being tortured, always being tormented. Um, really grew up thinking I was such a bad little girl. Right. And then the only time there was a reprieve was during the sexual abuse, and that's when I was a good little girl. Mm -hmm. So the dichotomy right. and the confusion that a child goes through, um, and that torment and that pain doesn't just disappear. No. It goes into adulthood. So I came into my adult life with some pretty serious uh, trauma mm -hmm. to have to deal with. And like so many, we it manifests in um, egregious ways, right, addiction right. and um, just feeling so unworthy and self-esteem mm -hmm. and self-confidence issues and eating disorders right. and psychological disorders. So, And then the shame and the guilt and the condemnation that that brings because when you're being abused, mm -hmm. you know, the abuser makes it think that it's your fault. That it's your that fault. That it's your fault. And if you tell anybody, then you're going to be in trouble. And so yes. that just manifests deep within our soul, which, you know, causes all kinds of issues, like you said, can cause sickness, disease, but then oppression, depression. So my stepfather um, was my abuser mm -hmm. and threatened to harm my mother if I ever told. Right. And then I had two little sisters that I really mm. tried so desperately to, um, to protect. Right. So I was trapped. And when I did finally just snapped, I think emotionally and said, I can't, I can't take this anymore. Right. I, the only escape that I knew was suicide. Mm -hmm. And uh, there go I by the grace of God Amen. that he saved me. Amen. I took uh, 62 sleeping pills, two bottles of sleeping wow. pills and drank a half a bottle of vodka straight. Oh, wow. And, and at 17. At 17. At 17. And thank goodness I didn't have anything on my stomach. So it was, um, able to survive that. And, and what was the encounter with the Lord like at, at that point in your life? I knew the Lord. I had been saved at 12, but uh, I had the fire and brimstone sermon right. that I, um, if you want to be delivered, come to the offer, altar. So I ran to the altar yes. and yes, I want to be delivered. I want all this to end. Please, Jesus. And it was just not in his plan. It, it went on for, for years later and I just served God from a guilty distance. Mm -hmm. I thought I'm dirty. I'm damaged. Right. I, um, so uh, when I uh, went through the suicide attempt, I felt God's presence with me. It was no, it was just no doubt that he was with me Amen. and heard the verse, I can do all things through mm -hmm. Christ who strengthens me. And that helped me put one foot in front of the other. And that's what I've been doing now for about 40 years, putting one step in front of the other. And I truly want to help survivors, right. adult survivors, both men and women mm -hmm. to tell them if God did it for me, he can do it. For Amen. Them. He is not a respecter of persons, yeah. and he can heal, deliver, yes. and set each person free. And that is my free. message. So let me ask you this: At seventeen, you you tried suicide. 
Did, were you able to tell anybody or talk to anybody about it at that point about the sexual abuse? You know, I think like so many, it just kind of uh, it comes out, it explodes. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you keep it depressed. It's like keeping a beach ball underwater. Right. And so I did begin to tell and try to get help. and. Um, but at the same time, I'm trying to survive. Right. I'm trying to get into college, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to live a normal life. Yes. And um, I actually met my husband. So I think it's, I just kind of peeled back the layers of the pain uh, through the years. Mm -hmm. And even with my husband, it was years later before he knew really the depth right. of the torture that I went through and the torment. Because you can only hide it so long. You can only hide it mm -hmm. so long. But God has been with me every step of the way, right. and I just give him the glory Amen. that I've been able to heal, and I can share that healing with other people. So what did your healing, when did it actually start? Let's just start. At 17, you, you tried to commit suicide, and then you went into adulthood. So when did you actually think, oh gosh, I'm, I'm actually getting healed. I'm being set free. Um, so I really, not into my late 20s, okay. um, when I had my first child at 25, I started to um, kind of live vicariously and a lot of flashbacks mm -hmm. and a lot of nightmares and really um, tried to numb my pain with drugs and alcohol right. and just realized this is not the life I want to live. This is not the parent I want to be. It's not the wife right. I want to be. Um, so I had another serious breakdown, uh, probably somewhere around 28, 30 years old, that I um, really contemplated suicide again. Mm -hmm. And my husband stepped in and said, we're going to get you help. Amen. So it was a combination of growing in my faith, mm -hmm. getting counseling, professional counseling, right. and having my husband there saying, I'm, I'm going to love you through this. Amen. And to know that it's okay to not be okay, yes. but to not stay that way. We got to take a short break. We'll be right back. We're we'll be right back with more on Triumph, from tragedy to triumph. We'll be right back. Hi, and welcome back to The Christian View. We are talking today about Tragedy to Triumph with Angela Williams. So thank you again for being here. It's been such a pleasure so far. So good to be with you. When we went to break, we talked a little bit about how in your 20s, upper mm -hmm. 20s, you were you kind of went through another crisis, mm -hmm. another thought of maybe I just need to end it all, and your husband stepped in. You know, I think it's such a taboo subject because people don't want to talk about it. You know, and we sit in counseling offices and we listen to people well up in age, 60, mm -hmm. 70 years old, who are still suppressing and hiding the abuse. Why do you think that is? Um, there's such power in, in your voice and in speaking, and so that really is the beginning of healing. Right. But I think that there, there's so many things. One is um, generally the abuser was within the family, right. so they're trying to protect the abuser. Two, they're so ashamed. Mm -hmm. Like I was so horribly ashamed of what was done to me right. and what I had to participate in. So there's that level of shame mm -hmm. and they feel like their world is gonna end if someone finds out. Right. When, when they do release the secret, when they do tell, when they do seek counseling, if I could have any message to your viewers, yes. it's like if you are suffering in silence, there's no healing in isolation. Right. There's right. only healing in community. And that's where the enemy wants us to stay. He Absolutely. wants us to stay in isolation mm -hmm. because if he can make it, well, if you tell anybody, you know, they're going to be upset or they're going to be offended or they're going to they're going to put it back on you. The enemy has us where he wants us. But when we start springing it into the light, the darkness into the light, that's when true healing starts to take place. So for your viewers, mm -hmm. um, approximately one in 10 children are sexually right. abused. Some say one in four girls, one in six boys. So the statistics are all over the place. Right. I heard one when, in every nine minutes. One every nine minutes. Is getting so a, you yeah. think about, you're not alone. Right. There are many of us survivors out there. Yes. But only one in 10 will ever tell, mm -hmm. ever tell this right. horrific, traumatic secret of what happened to them. Right. And it, the perpetrator stole your innocence. Mm -hmm. They stole your childhood. But God could restore Amen. all of that. Amen. But it's only until you come into that place of the light. You come into that place right. of revelation and being able to share the most painful thing. And someone else needs to hear your story. There could be other members in your family or mm -hmm. other people that need to hear that, yes, I am a survivor. Right. And that's one reason for Angela's voice is to stand up and use my voice Amen. and say, you are not alone. I am right here with you and I will show you the light. And 
it's Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ. And what does Revelation say? We overcome Him by the blood, blood of the Lamb. I am and the testimony. Our, our testimony. You know, testimony. we we all have a test, and we all have a testimony. And it's when we speak that testimony and we give victory to the Lord, that's when others are going to be able to be set free by the and power only that, of our testimony. We can reach back and protect the next generation. Right. We're yes. the ones who know the pain. We know the torment. We yes. know the torture. We know the residual effect. So why can't we use our voice and stand up and say, not this generation of children. Right. And we are standing by and we're letting this generation of children be sexualized at an earlier and earlier it, age. Yes. And, I, and that's just Satan's plan. It is. He wants to take our children out. He wants to confuse our children at an mm -hmm. early age. You know, I was... Um, you're going into schools. Are you going into schools right now, trying to get your material into schools to help shed light on the dark subjects? Yes, I am praying yeah. uh, that our Find Your Voice program, which is uh, it's designed for pre-K to third grade. Right. It's three books. Gracie Finds Her Voice talks mm. about the power of our voice right. and how we can't keep a secret. Um, Grant Finds His Shield, which is about personal boundaries oh, and yes. what is a personal boundary. Right. And Gracie and Grant's big win is about the self-confidence mm. that we have to carry into life to know right or wrong. And I have a whole curriculum developed around really empowering children to speak up if there's something wrong or uncomfortable going on in their lives. Right. And you you know, Angela, it's, it's sad, but it's so needed. It's sad that kindergartens, pre-K, we have to, you know, be there, be an advocate in this because we can't, they're not safe. And it's sad, but it's so needed to have the materials that you... you so the created. median age of sexual abuse is eight years old. Mm -hmm. Let that sink in. Yeah. That's a second grader, third grader. Yeah. I mean, I have a seven-year-old. And I'm having to tell her, you know, make sure you stay close. Stay close when you're when you're at an event. Stay close to an adult, and you know, be be mindful of who's around you. And children that are groomed and sexually abused at that early age, mm -hmm. they are more prone to be. Um, lured into sex trafficking, right. which everyone now is kind of the buzzword. Right. I call it child rape. Let's mm -hmm. call it what it absolutely. is. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it just, it baffles my mind that there's that much evil in the world trying to get to, to our children, you know? More evil than you know. Mm -hmm. It's just, it just, it just breaks my heart. But people like you standing out, Angela's voice, doing things to bring this taboo subject into light. And we need more Angela's voices, yeah. but yes. And I really feel strongly that if we, if we survivors can get healed and we can stand up, then we can have the power to stop this. Amen, amen. Let's talk about some symptoms of people yes. who've been sexually abused. As children, as it goes into their adulthood, what are some of the symptoms that you see? Well, as children, if you um, have a child in your home, you want to look for a distinct change in behavior that you cannot explain. Right. Um, and that may be bedwetting, and that may be doing worse in school. It may be um, self-harm. Mm. We see a lot of cutting. Right. We see a lot of pulling of hair. Uh, just anger, aggression and anger that can't be explained. Mm -hmm. And in adulthood, you really, uh, survivors deal with a lot of anxiety. They deal right. with a lot of fear. They deal with a lot of depression. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, they deal with a lot of addictions, uh, be it food, alcohol, drugs, to try to numb that pain. Right. And you know, speak to the audience for just a minute. It's okay to get help. Yes, it is okay to get help. There's no shame in getting mental help. There's no shame to reaching out to a pastor or a trusted friend or call me. If you need someone to break your silence with, the healing only begins when you use your voice to break your silence and you begin to seek healing. And we have opportunities. I facilitate a support group twice a month and we're having a Time to Heal conference on September 30th for anyone that has suffered from childhood trauma. Amen. And if a, if, a, if a child comes to a parent and says, you know, this is what's happening or they're exhibiting those symptoms, you know, go to counseling, go to help. Even if, it, if it's something else, just don't brush it under the rug don't because it. we need to be the light. And I think the first thing they need to hear is I believe you. Right. And this is not your fault. Right. And it'll be okay. And it's going to be okay. We'll be right back with more with Angela and find your voice in just a minute. Don't go away. Hi, and welcome back to The Christian View. We're having a great discussion with Angela Williams. We're talking about tragedy to triumph and Angela's voice and how Angela spent 14 years in silence being sexually abused at home and then what she did with it. And at age 17, she tried to commit suicide, but the Lord had different plans for her and came in, as He does for you, and came in and set her free. And so we're going to talk a little bit about how you got set free. We're going to talk about your new book, Loving Me After Abuse, which is so hard, Angela, to learn to love yourself 
after you've been abused because as we talked earlier, the enemy wants to come in and shame you and guilt you and condemn you, but God has come to love you and set you free. So being able to love yourself is so powerful. Let's talk about that. Well, I feel like it's my last frontier of my healing. Um, so many survivors, we carry the curses from, that our abusers spoke over us and into our lives. Right. We carry the shame of the abuse and what we had to deal with. We carry the torture because there's just not sexual abuse. There's physical torture. Right. There's emotional torture that takes place mm -hmm. to get that absolute power over right, you. Right. So God placed this in my heart about five years ago and I really went through a journey of, okay, God, I can't write this book to I have absolutely conquered loving myself, That's right. looking in the mirror and saying, you know what? God created this and it's good. It's good. You know? Amen. He loves right. me. Yeah. And we all have our faults, but don't amplify the faults, amplify the beauty Amen. that's in within us. And that's what I hope this, this book does right. is it's a walk through scripture. It's a walk through my own personal journey. And I'm very honest mm -hmm. there. Are, I, I just shared with you and I'm going to share it to the world, but I have just learned how to put myself first and taking Amen. physical care of mm -hmm. my health, physical care that's of right. myself. Yeah. So I am eating well, I'm getting up in the morning and I have gotten addicted to the Peloton and okay. I have just lost about 24 pounds. Congratulations. And I'm on my way to yeah. a goal weight. Amen. And so that's another encouragement. I think that as, as survivors, we put on this um, insulation, this right. extra layer. Nobody's going to hurt me. That's right. And we use food to soothe ourselves. And so I just want to encourage that loving me is really, it's, it's a conversation with a friend and me sharing how I learned to love myself in all areas. Yes. Love, love my, um, my even my faults, mm -hmm. but uh, people say uh, I'm a bull in a china shop. <laughs> I, I get things done. That's, Sometimes yeah. I suck the air out of the room. And you know what? That's how God designed right, me. Right. So I'm not going to apologize for it. So I just encourage our viewers just to look for the beauty that's within mm -hmm. yourself and know that God designed that beauty just for a purpose that Amen. only you can fulfill. That's right. And you know, Angela, it's hard to love other people the way Christ wants us to love if we're not loving ourselves. Because but the if, greatest commandment is what? Right. To love, love your neighbor as, as yourself. Right. So that tells me we have to love ourselves. Right. So. And sometimes it's hard, especially when we've been beat down with the shame, the guilt, and the condemnation. So um, what is one of your favorite scriptures that you kind of clung to when you're walking through this healing? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Mm -hmm. And I really related to the lady that was bleeding for 12 years right. in Mark. Yes. And he, she said, your, you know, your faith has healed you. Go walk in freedom is what Jesus told her. Yes. But she just believed, you know, she'd gone through the doctor. She'd been bleeding. Mm -hmm. She was shamed. You know, she was isolated. Right. Right. But she thought, if I can just touch Jesus, and that's me. Yes, yes. In my healing, if I could just touch Jesus, mm -hmm. if, if I could just stay so close to him, right. then I'm going to get my healing. So I really relate to that scripture too. I love um, when Jesus told her, you know, your faith has healed yes. you. Go and be free. Right. And I love the visual because she pressed in. She pressed, pressed in. through the crowd. The she crowd. didn't care what anyone mm -hmm. thought. She didn't care that they were looking at her or whatever. She pressed in because she knew if she could just and get Jesus, there. Jesus, it was an intimate moment with Jesus. Right. He wanted to know her story. He yes. wanted to know the power that went out of him. Mm -hmm. He wanted to know yes. what that what that healing looked like in right. her life. And that to me was so exciting. So, and then in the middle of that story, Jesus goes and he resurrects a little girl. Amen. So, so yep. in my, and this may not be Lord the way you you design that story, but in, in my mind, my little girl inside of me, that mm -hmm. innocence was stolen, yes. has been resurrected. Amen. And she lives. Amen. She does. And it says that the Lord will restore what the locusts all, all the years stolen. the locusts That's right. Stolen. And so he can do that through redemption, yes. through healing, through the deliverance, through the grace and through the love. And your that viewers need to know if he can lay hands on you and heal you like that, Amen. or he can do it like yes. he did with me. And it was a journey, a journey. but a beautiful journey. Yes. Because during that journey, you drew closer to him. Sometimes when he does it instantly, there's not that intimacy because you're not walking. The, you know, he, I've seen the Lord heal people instantly. But then the, the longer the journey takes, the more intimacy that is built between you and the Lord. And just to hear his voice mm -hmm. and to feel his presence through my darkest days, right. I, I wouldn't trade those opportunities for right. anything. In my first book, From Sorrows to Sapphires, I really take you through the whole healing journey, yes. which is um, uh, a long and arduous journey. But I, I really try to share just really candidly and openly um, what the pain did and the experience of the little girl. 
uh, right. and then the experience of the woman and where I am today. Amen. I love that. I love that. I mean, God is still setting people free. And so I love that you're talking about this subject. It's a hard subject to talk about. If there's one thing you could add, what would you, what would you add? I would just add that we as a society, as a culture, have to stand up and protect our children. And I would just also add that survivors uh, get your healing. Right. Come to our conference on the 30th. Come to my support group. You know, reach out to your pastor, a dear friend, someone. But right. Start the healing journey today. Yes. Amen. Not tomorrow. Today. Today. Because there's no guarantee tomorrow. Yeah. We need to do it today. Um, how can people get in touch with you, Angela? So they can just go to Angela'sVoice.com or they can follow me in social media at Angela's Voice. And you have a conference coming up. Yes, September 30th is our Time to Heal conference. Okay. We'll be doing some inner healing. I'll be sharing my testimony and it will be just a beautiful time for God to, to lay hands on you and heal you instantly Amen. or to start your journey. Amen. And they can get your book, Loving Me After Abuse, yes. on Amazon. Barnes & Noble, anywhere books are sold. And all your other material is All on my other there books. As yes, well. we have children's books, we have adult books, we have books for healing, we have books for uh, prevention. It's about 15 books. So if they go to angelasvoice.com slash resources, and then also angelasvoice.com slash events for all of our events right. we have coming up. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> God is doing great things Thank in you. So Thank I'm you for so, having yeah, me. This has been awesome. Coming. It has been fun. We'll be right back. We'll be right back with a little bit more. Don't go away here on The Christian View. Hi, and welcome back to The Christian View. We've had a great discussion today with Angela Williams on Find Your Voice, overcoming sexual abuse. So if you have been abused, y'all, I want you to know that there is help. There is a God who can set you free. If you have been abused, I would encourage you just to speak to someone today. Find a local pastor, a counselor, a parent, and share with them what's going on. God wants to set you free. He sees you, He loves you, and He is for you. Have a blessed day. Bye-bye.